Hi there, guys. So we're looking now at 14D. We've done a couple of difficult sections in 14B and 14C, which was hypothesis testing with the Poisson distribution and the binomial distribution. Um, now we're coming into the test for the product, product moment correlation coefficient. So we are testing to see whether any correlation that we find, any linear correlation that we find, is significant. So we're looking at linear correlation. And obviously, that can be between minus 1 and 1. That's the PMCC, or the R value that's given. Um, and whether or not it's significant will depend on the size of the sample. Now, a lot of the theory behind this you don't, know, don't need to know about. But obviously, the mechanics of it on your calculator, uh, you do need to know. And it's actually really simple to do. OK, so let's just give a slight bit of theory. And, and let's just say, let's imagine that we had two bits of information. Now, with two bits of information on uh, with two variables, OK, so maybe again, maths tests, physics tests, something like that. If we put, if we did some linear regression with this, we would get a line which definitely goes through those two points. It is possible to find a line which goes through those two points. Now, the R value in that case would be equal to 1. But obviously, for any two points, you know, even if we had two points here, that would give us an R value, which would be equal to minus 1, because we have negative correlation. there. So uh, for any two points, we're going to find some correlation. But obviously, N is so small that that correlation is meaningless. OK, so this is where this test comes in here. Let's have a look at the example says, example four, um, the number of times students are late for school and the distance that they live from the school is thought to be related. A sample of eight students is selected randomly and the data for the previous six weeks is checked. The following results were obtained. Now, they do not say in this case that they think that the people who live closer to school are going to be more on time. I mean, it's possible that the people that live further away get busted and that they're always on time and the people who live locally cut things fine and that they're more often late. All that is suspected here is that the two things are related. The distance and the lateness are related here. OK, so we have distance from school, eight students, number of times that they're late uh, in six weeks. Here we go, we've got five times, two times, zero times, and so on. Now, obviously, this bit, this part of the table just fits in underneath here, of course. So um, this is one table. OK, so it tests at the 5% significance level whether there is a linear relationship between the two variables. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put this information into my calculator. I've got the TI Inspire. I'm going to go to add new new document i'm going to go to spreadsheets and i'm going to put the data in so i've got 5.2 1.4 i'm just putting this in column a i've got 6.7 i've got 8.8 2.3 2.8 .8, 7 and 0 0.5 so you can try this as well then we've got 5 2 0 6 1 3 two and zero okay now we want to do a test so we're going to go to menu and we're going to go to statistics and we're going to go to stats tests all pretty obvious so we go to stats test and what we want to do is a linear regression test now let's have a look down it says there's a linear regression t test and that's the only option it gives you there so it's the only one it's the linear regression T test. Okay, so that's what we've gone to. We've gone to linear regression. Regression, sorry for the handwriting. T test. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So now it asks you to put in some information, and we're going to put in C is equal, sorry, X list is equal to A square brackets, Y list is B and square brackets. Save equation to F6, it says for me, that's fine. Frequency list is one. Yep, that means to say there's no multiples of these things. These are just all individuals. And then it gives us the alternative hypothesis. So this is where 
Um, this is where we have to make a decision. We have three things to write here. So we have that rho, okay, it looks like a P there. It says beta and rho. But what we're focusing on is this rho. It's like a, sort of a P without the little stem bit here, without the little bit at the top. So we've got this rho is not equal to zero. So we're testing to see if the correlation coefficient is not equal to zero. That is, in fact, H1. Okay, that's our alternative hypothesis. And you'll see that labeled as HA, which is relating to H as in the alternative hypothesis, A for alternative. But that's our H1. And H0 is saying that there is no correlation. Uh, so that if there's no correlation, rho is equal to zero. So these are our hypothesis hypotheses to start off with. And so for us, we want to choose this one here as our alternative hypothesis. Now, there are, just turn my calculator off. So there are, let's just take this back, there's three things that we can choose from here. We can also say, let's test to see whether or not we have positive correlation. And let's test to see whether or not we have negative correlation. But of course, in our example here, they don't give us an idea as to what we're looking for. So we're just testing to see if there is correlation. Okay, so I'm happy to say rho is not equal to zero. I'm going to press OK, and it gives me a p-value now. So the p-value that is what I'm looking for here, and the p-value that they give is, and it will say, it just says directly p-value here, and it says is 0 0.19024, okay, which is 9.0% to three significant figures. So is this lower than 5%? If it is lower than 5%, then we will accept the alternative hypothesis. If we're in that 5% critical region, we can see we are clearly not in the 5% critical region. So we will say 19% is greater than 5%. Therefore, so this implies, little implication arrow there, this implies that rho is equal to zero, or rather implies that reject the H1, reject the fact that there is correlation. Now, let's just check that one in the book as well. So let's see what they write for the answer there. They're getting the same, 19.0%. Hence, no reason to reject the null hypothesis. We are not in the 5% critical region. Now, let's have a look at how they do this one on the calculator. Same, same. Uh, again, they're putting in the information. There's the little box you'll come up with on the TI and Inspire. That's the row is not equal to zero. That's what we're going to um, test as the alternative hypothesis. And there you go. It's, it's really straightforward. Um, if we were doing this at the 20% level, we would accept that there is some uh, degree of uh, relationship between these two things and then I'm not sure what the R value was whether or not it was positive or negative but obviously you can find out whether it's positive regression or negative regression as well and you can find out your R value too. Okay so just to mention because rho is new just to go through that again rho is seen to be your correlation coefficient not R they're not using R in this case they're using rho that's what it's called on the calculator when we're testing it. Okay, right, well, that's all there is to this. So have a go at a couple of these questions. The next section is going to be a fair bit harder. So the next section is on, let's just see, the next section is on testing for the mean of a normal distribution. Okay, so we're going to be testing the parameter of a normal distribution, which is similar to 14B and 14C but we're also going to involve here two-tailed tests. Okay, um, should we just flick back to this one here? Is there anything else in there? There was nothing else in there. But essentially what we were doing here was a two-tailed test because we didn't know whether or not rho was going to be positive or negative. So we were doing a two-tailed test in this case when we said rho is not equal to zero. That's coming up next. Okay, uh, thanks for listening.